great fish for you. I can remember the exact moment I fell in love with this city. When I was 11 and we went on a family holiday to a place called Cherivia on the Adriatic coast and my father used to take us up to this square in the middle of the town to have ice creams and there was a little cafe where we would have go every night for ice creams and one night I arrived there ready for my ice cream and there were no ice creams. I only said no, we were just making them. So, out of curiosity, I went over and there was, you know, the, there was the vat in which it was being churned and they were putting in the mixture and the cream and the, the eggs and, and then they poured in, in the, f the flavouring, which was banana. And I just thought, any country that can show so much love for the ice cream has got to be a country worth loving. And, and, and that was when the moment I fell in love, the search for the perfect ice cream goes on. Every Italian, when they wake up in the morning, have an absolute belief they have a God-given right to the best food their money can buy. Our relationship food is is completely is is not completely different. I think we still have actually an abiding passion for our food. But we have a much more open um, uh, food culture here, so we are we we are curious about you know, foods from all over the world. The initial thing was a, a reaction to, so legend go, the um, opening of a McDonald's on the Spanish steps in Rome. But I think it, it, it put its finger on, a, on, a, on an important point. The in inevitable power of, of globalisation and um, homogenisation and internationalisation is that you know, it was, it, it's a direct threat to local food cultures and to local food cultures, to uh, varieties of, of fruit and vegetables and animals and so on. But you know, is that we don't produce olive oil, we don't grow lemons, we don't produce you know, fish sauce. Food is the history of borrowing, importing, adopting, using ingredients from elsewhere. Traditionally, it's, it has been a male-dominated um, profession, absolutely no question. We, we always expect things to change. You know, when we identify a weakness or a flaw in something, we assume that it can be changed and corrected in the, within a very short space of time because everybody in their right mind must realise it. What, what, what you want is a women who've come through and who've won the Michelin stars or have gained the sort of recognition within the industry, and, th and they become examples. I always say, oh, gee, I think I can do that. You know, the Monica Galettis of this world, the Tess Mintz Meyers of this world, the Hestons and the, and the, and the Gordons of this world have all worked inc unbelievably hard to get where they are. It's a very, very disciplined business. And unless you're prepared to do it, then you know, you're, you're not going to get to the top. You are having to serve food to 70 people um, who are all wanting their food in, you know, in pretty much exactly the same time in perfect condition. I don't think most armies could actually manage that and how professional kitchens manage it day after day after day is one of the abiding miracles of our time. The way we eat is influenced by many, many different um, uh, forces. One of the reasons why the same television food program is that they're cheap. They're cheap to make, and and we who appear on them are cheap. So television itself is a is, it, it's it's a marketing tool. If the chef is the most important resource a restaurant has, then you then you want to build up the the, the image of your chef because that's how you sell your um, you know, the, 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 the tables and the covers in your restaurant. The fact is, if you look at the external evidence, you know, is that the level of obesity among children, the rise in type 2 diabetes, the high incidence of heart disease, yeah, everything points to pretty poor diet. Um, so I think you have to be very careful about when one says about uh, what influence does food or media actually have upon the way we eat. The great change, single greatest change that the, the internet has brought around is that the sense of community is no longer defined by society or by geography, it's defined by common interest. People who are interested in food can communicate with other people who are interested in food, whether they be in Argentina or Antarctica, be able to exchange recipes, ingredients, um, techniques, you, know, you do it like that.